Hi, this is Jason McGee, and this is part four in my video series demonstrating the capabilities of IBM Workload Deployer 3.0. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the second part of how you deploy applications to Workload Deployer, which is called Virtual Systems. Virtual Systems are different than Virtual Applications, which I've shown in the first uh, few videos in this series, in that what Virtual Systems allow you to do is stand up a collection of virtual machines uh, representing a particular middleware product like IBM Web Server Application Server or IBM DB2 um, and configure um, that product in a way that makes sense for your project or your team. Um, so whereas virtual applications was focused on the deployment of applications and allowing you to specify the components of your application and the policies around your application, virtual systems is focused on the deployment of a topology or a system, uh, an environment uh, using a particular uh, piece of middleware and allowing you to automate the configuration and provisioning of that middleware to meet your requirements. So to get started, let me show you the core things that make up a virtual system and the process that you go through to deploy them. So let's get started. Um, like always, we'll start at the home screen for IBM Workload Deployer. Now, virtual systems are actually patterns built on top of a set of virtual images. Um, and so the first thing to understand um, about virtual systems is the images that make them up. So let's take a look at the images that come with IBM Workload Deployer. And remember, you can always add your own. Um, so to look at the list of images that are provided with the system, we go in Workload Deployer to the catalog menu and select virtual images. This will bring up a list of all the virtual images that are installed in the system. You can see here we have a whole collection of virtual images, including images for DB2, for Web Server Application Server, for Web Server MQ, for Message Broker, and for Portal. Um, for some of these images, we have them available in multiple versions and multiple configurations. IBM Workload Deployer also supports many of these images on different operating system platforms. So you can see that we have images for, for Linux on Intel, we have images for AIX and PowerVM, uh, we have some images for Linux on, um, on the mainframe. You can, of course, uh, add your own images um, uh, as you acquire additional capability from IBM for additional products. You can update these images with new versions. You can even do things like extend these images and capture them back and create customized versions of these images. Um, for each of these images, you can see that if you click on one of these images, you have information about the image as far as what operating system and hypervisors it supports, what parts it contains, um, and the like. Um, so for DB2, um, for WebSphere, you can see uh, there's a whole collection of capabilities here. One of the important ideas behind a virtual image is the idea of parts. So one image can compri be comprised of multiple parts, which represents different uh, elements of that product that you can set up and configure. So for example, for WebSphere, you have parts that represent app server nodes, parts that represent deployment managers, parts that represent web servers, all coming out of the same image. Now, how do I actually use these images? To do that, I go to the Patterns menu and select a Virtual System pattern. The Virtual Systems pattern um, brings up a list of predefined patterns that we've shipped um, with Workload Deployer, which represent common configurations for um, different environments that you might want to create. So if I click, for example, on the DB2 Enterprise pattern, I see a single node pattern representing a single instance of a DB2 enterprise server that I could provision. Uh, if I select the DB2 Express and WAS HA cluster pattern, um, I see a much more complex pattern, which actually represents a um, multi-VM configuration, in this case six VMs, which represent a web server application server cluster, uh, a web server, a web server deployment manager, and a pair of DB2 servers in an HADR HA configuration all represented as a single pattern that I could deploy with one click. Um, these patterns uh, that we ship represent the best practices that we've developed over time with our customers about how to deploy these pieces of software into common configurations, but they also serve as a starting point for you to create your own patterns. So you can copy these patterns, create your own customized versions of the patterns, change their configuration, change their settings, and add script packages to customize the configuration that will happen at the time that uh, this pattern is deployed. In a later video, I'll show you the process of creating a script package and applying it to a pattern. But for this example, let's just pick a simple pattern and deploy it. So I'm going to pick a WebSphere single server pattern. This is a single instance of WAS uh, that I would stand up maybe to use for development 
right? Or to deploy a simple departmental application. So you can see this pattern in the pattern definition. Uh, it's based on WebSphere 7. It'll stand up a single VM uh, on Intel um, with uh, ESX as the hypervisor um, at version 70017 of WebSphere. To deploy that, I click the deploy button in the upper right hand corner um, and I can present it with some deployment options. Uh, the first deployment option is to give the deployed system a name. This is similar to virtual applications where you're asked to give a name for the running instance uh, that you're going to create. Um, I can choose environments, I can schedule the deployment, but the most important thing is to actually configure the parts that make up this application. So this deployment uh, pattern contains a single part, which is that single standalone server. So I click on that and I get presented with a list of properties that represent uh, the, the configurable properties of that pattern. Um, I have some resource things I can specify, like how many virtual CPUs and memory that I want. I can specify whether I want to reserve those resources out of the cloud or allow overcommitment. Um, and I can specify things like cell names and node names, feature packs that I want enabled, um, and specify passwords for the key accounts, the root password account and the virtual user password account um, on the system. So the passwords are the only missing required element, so I'll fill those in and hit OK. I've now configured the virtual system pattern. I can hit OK again um, and go ahead and deploy that pattern to the cloud. So IBM Workload Deployer will now uh, deploy that pattern to the cloud. It will queue up the request, um, launch the appropriate image onto the cloud, um, and then configure it um, with the properties that you specified and run any automation packages that you've associated with that pattern. And when it's done, uh, it will provide you information about the IP address and access information to get at that um, virtual machine that's running on the cloud. So that's all it takes. Pick a pattern and deploy it if you want to use one of our default ones. Um, in a later video, I'll show you how to customize that pattern, change its properties, um, and add your own uh, automation to the process of deployment. So with virtual systems, you have the ability to have complete control over how you deploy a given piece of software to, to automate the provisioning of that um, and make it very repeatable and rapid to create new environments. Thanks a lot.